Hey everyone, so it's Tuesday. Oh, the work week is going, it's just rolling along. Maybe you're a little bit behind at work. Maybe working from home is still your reality and it's getting a little bit monotonous. I know so many of us have hit our capacity a long time ago dealing with this pandemic. We haven't seen a lot of the people that we love. So you know what? Let's slay some dragons. Let's talk about finding your fairy tale because this is a way to connect from a distance but figure out what we all have in common. We've been doing this for two months now, which is super exciting, and we have had so many amazing guests share their stories of how they got to where they are, the moments that they might have faltered and thought that they couldn't achieve everything that they have, and we've also picked their brains about what we can do as we start to wonder about our goals and what we want to achieve and how we can apply some of their life lessons to our own daily life. So tonight's guest I'm super excited about. Her name is Shannon Mack, and she is the host of a show called Petties and Mimosas. I mean, if that doesn't sound good, <laughs> I don't know what does because not only is it important to talk to each other and and kind of find what we all have in common and help each other it's also super important to take some time for self-care. She has been a radio host. She has been on TV. She launched her own internet radio show and she's joining us now to talk about the Bronx to LA, all sorts of places in between. And you never know, maybe just spill some celebrity gossip from some of her many guests that she has interviewed. Hey, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. How are you today? I am great. Honestly, this, this show has become such a lifeline for me to stay mm -hmm. connected. Uh, the extroverts in the world, um, I think they're, they're definitely needing to adjust to this strange reality. And I know I've seen your show shift from in person to the same way that we're doing this now. So yeah. you get it. Yeah, you have no choice but to get it, right? <laughs> True, and, and get it with a smile too. So <laughs> okay. let's introduce you to our viewers now. Um, what are you up to now in terms of your show and, and why it drives you? So I'm currently doing Quarantine Mimosas, the quarantine edition of Petty's and Mimosas. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, shot teeny today, but <laughs> normally quarantine and mimosas, of course, had to adjust to what's currently happening. So it's, I, I would love to be back in the nail salon shooting petties and mimosas, but hey, you got to do what you got to do, you know? So this is the quarantine edition. However, I actually am looking forward to the top of next year because... Yeah. Pandemic or not, we're shooting. <laughs> Good. Okay, yeah. You have to figure out yeah. ways to, to keep going safely. Right, exactly. I watched my interviews and I'm like, we're sitting six feet apart anyway. So <laughs> I right. make this work, you know? So I figure we'll... Maybe hang a little curtain, like a gauzy curtain between and it'll add to the intrigue. You'll feel like you can really ask them anything. Right, right, right. And I'm just looking forward to making it work because yeah. I, it will have been a year, January. Yeah. So I'm just ready. Ready like Freddie. <laughs> I was ready yesterday. I hear you. So, you know, um, what I love about your story is you started in the entertainment industry, like many people do, working for someone. And when you work in the entertainment industry and in many businesses, right, but I think perhaps it's a little more I'll just go there. I'm going to give myself the, the license to say it's a little more brutal. Like yeah. they, they say, we're going to hire you. You say, okay, here I come. They say, move across the country. You're like, sounds amazing. Move across the country again. I was hoping you'd say that. I didn't even unpack my boxes. It gets so <laughs> crazy. So you went from working for the entertainment industry to working for yourself. Take us through a little bit of that journey and whether you, you doubted that you would be where you are today doubt oh gosh what a word okay we can rewind back to my radio days i did uh yeah. afternoons at kiss 101.7 in delaware like the delaware philly market and actually that was like my first like devastating they didn't say obviously they didn't say no because i was working at the station but that was when i got fired so they say you haven't worked that. in radio or tv <laughs> until you gotten fired. fired they fired and i was so devastated i was only what 21 22 so it's like and this was my dream job right out of college it was like the best thing that had ever happened to me and then two years in boom goodbye 
and it's like what the heck do you do all that so that like taught me from the beat from a long time mm -hmm. like nothing is forever until you create right. your own and even then it's still not forever so you have to do the best that you can do to try to create your own so i learned from a long time ago that you know if it's not yours then <laughs> last hire first fire is what they say right you know so it's always a risk That's and a true. gamble when you're working for somebody else always mm -hmm. So with that, I kind of just ran with it. Like, and I was just tired of getting in a job after that, job and job after that. I was tired of getting into like, you know, issues with coworkers and managers and it just not feeling fulfilling. And it was just so many signs that told me, you got to do your own thing. <laughs> you weren't meant to be the employee. You were meant to be the boss. So I had to listen to that little, you know, intuition, the little voice that tells you, you can do yeah. it, go for it. Let me ask you something on that note, because I think, I think somewhere along the line, we misguide our kids, may, and maybe even especially our, our girls, that there's a, there's a fine line between believing in yourself and being conceited or being entitled or going for something and thinking that you deserve more. So when you have that big dream, the one that you're scared to say out loud because people might say, well, who do you think you are? to get to that level, how do you present it to yourself to convince yourself that you deserve it? Because we do, we all deserve that big dream. Affirmations and repetition. Mm. Repetition on the subconscious mind through affirmations. Like there's, I noticed that when I stop listening to my affirmations, I get a little like doubtful and I get worried and I'm like, I start to second guess. But those affirmations every morning, YouTube has a bunch of them. Okay. I listen to that over and over and over so that I never forget. Because you know, when you're a little girl, especially coming from the Bronx and like that, the, the odds are stacked against us. Mm -hmm. You have to find some sort of way to unlearn trauma you know what i mean like unlearn that okay you ain't never gonna make it you're never gonna be able to do this you're never gonna be able to do that so like as an adult i had to unlearn these like these these ways of second guessing myself so i did that for real through affirmations because as far people always think i'm so confident i'm this that and the third but i have my days where i'm just like can i really do this Oh my God, like I want to sit in the corner and cry. Yeah, and you know, that's what started this whole thing for me because I was thinking about uh, the, the book that I'm currently working on is, is based on fairy tales. And I started thinking about poison apples and you know how the witch feeds one to Snow White. And I was like, yeah. you are the witch and you're feeding them to yourself. So how do mm. I get rid of those poison apples? And if I have them, everybody has them. So mm. let's talk about how we get rid of those. When you say affirmations, these are these are almost mantras that are that are universal or are they private ones that you have also made up if someone's unfamiliar yes. with the process of going through affirmations how does it work so affirmations are words that you can like you affirm like this yes. this is it so i am not like i will be or i think i can like mm -hmm. i am because when you speak in the present you're already speaking as if it is right now, not anything that's in the future, because we don't know the future is always going to be there. So you have to speak affirmatively, like, you know, like, you know, like, you know. And of course, at first, when you start doing affirmations, it might sound like weird to yourself, but you have to do it until you believe it. You have to chant those words of those affirming words until you believe it. I'm actually dropping um, my own lip line. I yeah. should have actually wore some. I, I have um some lip gloss, but it's kind of old. I should have like refreshed it. But I'm dropping you, my own lip. You line. didn't put your own product on <laughs> the most beautiful billboard you own. <laughs> no, I did. <laughs> I, I have on some lip gloss. I do. But like I said, I should have refreshed it. Yeah. But um, when I drop the actual uh, lip line, I'm gonna be naming the uh the lip colors like affirmative words and. Love uh, that that describe the woman, you know? Yeah, so yeah. I have a red color that everybody loves and the red is going to be called voluptuous. Another one is going to be called like bold. Like they're all going to mm -hmm. have, you know, empowering, be empowering words. And um, that has, you know, goes hand in hand with doing the affirmations every morning and every night. Like it has to sink into the subconscious mind so that you believe a new normal. You have to unlearn, you know, things that you were taught in the beginning of, 
time, like when you were a kid, that told you right. to not have confidence, to not believe in yourself, to think that it's not going to work, to like give up easily, you know? So not believe in your repeat those things so easily to ourselves, right? Right. And somehow it's, really it's easy. harder to train ourselves to, to say the good things to ourselves. Yes. It's kind of nutty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? It is. Yeah. It is. But it's, it's the first battle that you have to overcome when you're on your way toward finding your fairy tale. To identify it for yourself, you have to, you have to think that you deserve it. So once you said, you know what, it's not for me working for someone else. I want to create a show that encapsulates my message and what I'm all about. How hard was it to launch your own internet radio show? Not hard. First of all, radio, I'm... I'm probably going to be biased. Like radio is like a part of me. Yeah. So, and, and that's one of the things, like whenever I uh, go astray and I don't listen to that, again, that inner voice, the intuition to tell me to do certain things. And that's when shit hits the fan. Excuse me for lack of <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. Hey, that's what it is. It's true. <laughs> you know, so I have to, I, I knew from a long time ago that I wanted to do radio, you know? Mm -hmm. So it wasn't, when I got fired from the radio station and I went to the regular nine to five world, it wasn't hard to get back to what truly resonated in my spirit, you know? Yeah. So radio and create, creating the show and doing all of that. I actually have a radio station. The station is actually down, right? And it's been down for like a week or two, but it'll be back up because yeah. I'm trying to like, you know, refresh some things. So I have a radio station and a radio show. So um, my radio show was called Spirituality, Sex and Serendipity. And that was when I went through, I went through a little bit of a spiritual awakening yeah. and I had this thing and I still do. I, I found out that I'm a light worker and I'm supposed to bring light and joy and all that to the world, you know, with my voice. So it wasn't very hard to create a show that, like you said, encapsulated all of that. So I just went with my intuition, went with my gut and somehow it just always falls into place. I think that that's something that we also tend to ignore on our journey toward success, because obviously success takes hard work, but somewhere along the line, you, you can confuse um, being unhappy, suffering mm -hmm. even for the, the success, and it starts feeling like punishment. You're like, oh, okay, I must succeed, and it's going to hurt, and I don't care, I'm going to get there. And then there are certain things that we all have, you know, whatever talent that we have or whatever thing it is that feeds our soul, that's so easy and we yeah. forget to follow that why do you think that is you know some, sometimes people might be listening to other people in the background mm -hmm. yeah people people don't realize that we all carry energies you know and we all have the power to influence decisions that we've already feel like we've made on the inside but that energy for whatever reason sometimes overpowers it maybe we lacked confidence about the dream or lacked confidence in whatever the idea was and then the minute you start talking and certain people are around it just wasn't you know so you got to keep certain things to yourself work on it you know believe in that without letting these outer whatever you know and then you can can build from that and you won't second guess yeah. You won't second guess that outside energies, that's real. That is a real thing, you know? So just like when you're in a new relationship or in a relationship period, like I feel like certain things should stay between you and your significant other because the minute you start talking to friends and people or whatever, then they start giving their opinion. Right. And then it has the power to influence you. And it has the power to like stray you to, maybe you were going this way, but now that you talk to somebody else, you're going this way. Mm -hmm. Maybe a good thing may not be a good thing, you know? So. Yeah, it's hard enough to find that own voice inside you. So then if you don't right. give it some time to kind of, <laughs> percolate and talk to you it could get right. it could get messy um so then exactly. from from your show from your radio show though you decided that you wanted to go back to on air and i love that your show focuses on an indulgence you know a luxury a pedicure what is more uh, mandatory relaxation than that how did you decide to combine chit chatting with your guests with mimosas and a pedicure other than just trying to get them talking. <laughs> actually, you know what? Petties and Mimosas was actually an idea that was given to me. Yeah. And 
it again it resonated on the inside of me and it was like this is what i'm supposed to be doing everybody that knows me knows that i'm a girly girl that and, and my family here on the east coast they like to make jokes and say oh you're so hollywood or you're bougie or whatever well hey i'll be i'll be i'll walk all the way to the bank and be bougie no problem <laughs> <laughs> that is no problem but Teddy's and Mimosas was actually an idea given to me by a producer of another show that I was yeah. on. So when he, and he just said it in passing, he was like, you got a great personality. You should do a show where you're interviewing celebrities and you guys are like getting pedicures and drinking mimosas, you know, like Petties and Mimosas. And my mouth, my jaw literally dropped to the ground. And I was like, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. You're like, oh, that's such a great idea. I'm going to start a media line. <laughs> <laughs> no, literally, immediately, no time wasted. How did you take it from the jaw-dropping moment to an actual working show where you're booking big guests? You know, I I have this thing in my mind, like no matter what, and whoever's listening, if you, if you have a thing where you want to start something new, always remember that keep it simple, stupid in the beginning, and you can tweak as you go. You don't have to have this big production, you know, like all set out, ready to go in front of you. You might not even know really what to do, but you might know where to start, you know? So like now I have all these sponsors on my show, like all these bigger celebrities. And I didn't even think, I mean, I knew it would, you know, end up that way or whatever, but I didn't even think this quickly that it would, you know, take off as... I hit the ground running yeah. <laughs> pretty much with um, Petties and Mimosas. So basically I started, I had a hundred bucks in my pocket okay. and I was a disgruntled Uber driver. I still hate Uber. Like it just left a bad taste in my mouth. So I took that hundred dollars and I said, okay, okay, I have this, I have this, I can get this and I can get this and this will be like a show, right? You know, so I just pretty much went from there. So I used that hundred bucks. I bought some champagne. I bought some orange juice. I went down to a nail salon and I was like, look, I have this idea. I'm, I'm um, working on sponsorship. Well, do you believe in the dream? And they're like, yes, I believe it. When you get your sponsors, then we go from there. And yeah, like it, I really hit the ground running with this. That's how I know that it's going to be like the biggest thing that I've ever, it's, it's, it, to me, it's in a nice, it's in a, it's in a nice space. Mm -hmm. But I know that down the line, it'll be a big show. And I, I, I just, I just have, you know, it feels right. I'm just proud of it. Yeah, yeah, it feels right. Exactly. It feels right. So, and, you know, and, and, and you're having fun and you're getting something from it too. Right, 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 right. For well, sure. Well, like, I always want to center, like, the conversation that I have with the celebrities around something like, you know, inspirational and life changing so that people don't feel like they sat and watched something. Like, what the heck? You ever watch something and be like, what did I just watch? What, yeah. what was this? I yeah, I joke. I say, I just, I just lost something in my head to make room for that, and now I'm pissed. You know, I was like, what childhood memory just got replaced by this junk? That's not okay. <laughs> right, right. Exactly, exactly. So I make sure that, you know, it's all centered around something inspirational that'll ch life change, you know, be life changing for somebody or whoever it is that's watching. Is there a guest who stands out for you that inspired you the most? Actually, I'm a few of them. Take nuggets from everybody. Oh yeah, oh yeah, a few of them. Who the first person that popped into my head when you asked me that is Angel Brinks. Angel went through oh my god, and then to have to live through everything publicly on TV. But her her fiance, her uh, son's father, had committed suicide, and mm -hmm. it was just and then she was suicidal, and then her family was like, "I told you so," and it was just a lot. And I didn't even realize like how heavy it was for her until we actually sat and we had the conversation, you know? Another one, um, Amina Butterfly, like she went through a lot, was publicly ridiculed for being, I guess, the side girl or whatever in her very public relationship on Love & Hip Hop. So just to see her come out so, you know, bold and brave on the other side when people just thought, just tried to destroy her and the guy she was with tried to destroy her. So just seeing that confidence and seeing her come through, you know, on top on the other side was a really a great thing to experience. So those two, you know, right off the top of my head that I can think about, like, yeah, think to have to live such private moments publicly. Yeah, exactly. Is, is tough. And, you know, from that level of celebrity right on down to 
our teenagers who are growing up, our kids now are, are growing up with social media and everything that you do is publicized. Everything. So everything you do. What's your advice for living a public life? Don't. Because you're out there too. <laughs> Don't. No, no. <laughs> I say, Put on a show, but keep the rest inside. Right, yeah. right. You know, um, I'm learning that, well, my new boyfriend now, we just, we've been together a couple of months, but he is kind of like keeping the reins on me as far as, you know, what he thinks should stay private versus mm -hmm. what we should, you know, publicize or what I should publicize. And not just me and him, but just period, you know? In general. And, Principal. right, because he always will paint the bad side for me, like, keep in mind that this, 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 this. And these are things that I didn't think about. So I would say keep good people in your corner and always remember to keep certain things like certain things should stay sacred, you know? And when the whole world knows it's no longer special, you know, or it's no longer like meaningful or you don't want to hurt the other person involved or whatever. Right, so I would right. say be very, and that's what I always keep in mind with him, like what he's comfortable you know, with me telling or posting or whatever. So I would say like, you know, keep a, pull back a little bit and keep certain things, you know, sacred and keep good people in your corner to remind you. Yeah. Yeah, is to surround yourself with, with good people because those are the people who are going to help you slay the dragons. What do you think has been your biggest your biggest dragon that you have slayed or the one that keeps rearing its ugly head and getting in your way? Girl, so many. <laughs> All those dragons. <laughs> oh my gosh, you know what? Actually, the first thing that pops into my head would be having a... There's always this fight in my head. Well, not anymore, because I feel like I slayed that dragon. But there was always this fight in my head about who supports me and who doesn't. Hmm. And who's who's really writing this dream out with me? Who believes in this dream? And I would expect, I was talking about expectation on a previous live, but I would always expect certain people to, you know, be so like wrapped up in my dreams and be super, so, so, so super supportive. Yeah. And they're not, you know, and I had to convince myself and actually remind myself that they're not supposed to be convinced of the dream. I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not I'm their dream. To, Right, it's you. not their dream, <laughs> right, you know? And I realized, too, that I'm not really creating content for them anyway. I'm creating for content, I'm creating content, excuse me, for people that I don't know, to connect with those people, you know? So I had to really, you know, get out of my own way with that because that was super difficult. Why don't they support? Why don't they repost? Why don't they watch the show? Why, do, why, 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 why? And then I realized, like... When I quote unquote, right, if I was Oprah tomorrow, then they're going to be like, oh my God, that's my whatever, whatever. So <laughs> I, I, I just, you know, I just try to just brush it off my shoulder. But that was one of the hardest things that I've had to, to like overcome and deal with. It is, it is hard when you're trying to get into any business and people, not only just your friends who are supporting you, but if you're trying to get into a business where people are established or you're switching yeah. careers in a way, you know, there's always going to be somebody who has achieved more or is at a higher level, whether it's money, awards, attention, audience, whatever. And it can right. be really easy to ask all those same questions. You know, Absolutely. why don't they like me? Why won't they let me into this, this tier? What do I have to do to be considered that successful? So it's the same right. sort of thing to, to shut out and, and to not worry what anybody else thinks. Because exactly. You know what that... With that, you actually, I believe that you actually have to do a lot of inner work before anything. Mm -hmm. Because when you're convinced on the inside, everything on the outside gets easier. You know, so it, 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 the work really starts with you. And then it trickles down into other areas of your life. You know, so if you can't, if you don't have, if you're not standing on some type of solid ground as an individual, you will especially especially when it comes to entertainment, I'm pretty sure you can attest to this. You will literally crash and burn. So you mm -hmm. have to have thick skin. You have to be, you have to do the work on you first before anything else will fall into place. And I and think that's- And you can't fake it. You can't fake it. I think that there's a lot of people because they're 
they're in front of an audience or they're on TV, they can pretend to be happy or they pretend to be generous. They pretend to be, be not competitive or not envious. Those things will eat you alive. They will. Yes, ma'am. Yep. So I think that that's it. Yeah, you, you look inside first. Easier said than done, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The affirmations are a good start. Like, I remember 2017 was not the best year of my life. But I always say it was the best and worst year. And what helped me a lot was listening to positive programming on like YouTube. Like, it, it was mm -hmm. just that. Like, I stopped listening to certain types of music. Like, I literally had to do the work. That's why I feel like my life is just, it's getting better. The goal yeah. just gets bigger and bigger and life just gets more interesting and more fun. The show gets bigger, better, all that. Because 2017, I was forced to do the work. What was it about, about that turning point for you that made you decide to go in a different direction or use different tactics than you had before? You know, you get to a point where you just say, I have had enough. You, they, they, there's a saying that goes like, you won't make a change until you're like sick and tired of being sick and tired, yeah. you know? So it's a, I, that's where I was at. I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. So I'm like, something's got to give. I have got to get down to the bottom of why A, B, C, and D always happens this way or why, or whatever, you know, whatever the issue was that year. But it took a lot of work. It took a lot of work. Worth it. Yes, Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Like nobody can come in between myself and my career. Like I don't need the, well, I support you. I don't need that anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't need the, uh, the approval. You know, I don't need people to come and tell me, Shan, your show is amazing. I know it's amazing, you know, and not sounding, not, not trying to sound conceited or full of myself, but because I did the work and I see the value and the worth in me and what I do, Everybody around me is that secondary. Yeah, it's, it's hard. I mean, I go back to the all of us living a more public life than we ever have before. Even if you post a picture of the, the beautiful dinner that you made or the sunset that you saw, it seems a little bit more legitimized when it goes like, 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 like. Yeah. And, like, it was a beautiful salad that I just made. I knew it. Like, 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 like best sunset ever i knew it we <laughs> constantly get told that we're right now so it's hard to tell that to ourselves without looking around the room it's very hard mm -hmm. to do that mm -hmm. it is for sure it is it is but nothing beats like i said working on that subconscious mind and working on it every day so that it starts to believe a new normal and when what? you're yeah, the new normal. What are some thoughts if someone's listening right now and they go, okay, I, I, I'm in a bad place and I'm not believing in myself and I, I, and I want to be able to get to the place where, where you are. Uh, what are some ways to identify toxic thoughts? And I know there's the obvious ones. I'm, I'm not going to fail. But then there's also even the smaller things that we do. That's just not going to happen for me. I'm not really going to be, I was never meant to be a millionaire, the, the main, the, get the lead in that show. You mm -hmm. know, that, that's just not my lot in life. You know, how, how do you recognize those little things that you, you have to get rid of? Can you categorize them and almost like say, oh, there it is. Shoot it down, shoot it down. Uh, no, seriously. As soon as those negative thoughts come into your mind, you have to immediately replace with the positive thought. You have to. You have to, because that negative thought has so much more power than you really think. You have to replace it. And you just have to become cognizant of it. You have to become aware. Self-awareness is huge. If you're not aware of it, it's never going to change. But you just, you have to just start paying attention. My one friend told me when I was going through what I was going through back in 2017, he yeah. said, you need to study yourself like a movie. That's what he said. He said, study yourself like a movie. And I was like, wow. So then I just start really paying attention to my thoughts, what I'm doing. Like, why does this person constantly make me feel this way? Why am I allowing this? What the hell? You know, like I said, when you really want change and you really get sick and tired, you will find a way. You will certainly find a way. When I see people that are in situations that they've been in for years, I'm like, oh, he or she's not sick and tired yet. They're not mm -hmm. sick and tired yet. You're not. You like Because they're it. still in it. Right. <laughs> 
You have right. to like it if you're still in the same situation that you were in, the same situation that makes you mad or oh, it's not making you angry yet. You're not tired yet. You might be mad. There's levels. Right. You might be frustrated, <laughs> but you have not hit the end of the rope. Right. Yeah. You haven't. I was at the end of my rope. I was completely, I was like, oh, no. I was like, I know what I came here for. And that's another thing. Like, you have to know why you were born. You got to figure it out. Figure out why you were born. Take your strengths you know, and figure out how you can use that to make the world better. See, it's funny. I, I, I'm in a place now where that makes sense to me. And it sounds exciting. And it sounds supportive. But I think if, if somebody had said that to me, if I had talked to you, maybe even as early as a, as recently as a year ago, and somebody said, you need to find the reason that you were born, I'd be like, oh, my God, <laughs> I have no idea. I'm so stressed out. I don't have a purpose in life. Failure. Failure right, and right. It be just one more thing. So for anybody who's watching right now who just had that freak out, I hear you. That <laughs> might have been me. I mean, there was even a little flicker in my brain that was like, oh, why was I born? But it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. It's not something like you have to change the world. You have to right. cure cancer. You have to, you know, stop war. It's right. how do you make the most of your time on this planet, you know, and, and have joy every day. Every day. Yeah. And how, and how you know you'll know by how you feel mm. like, like, Oh my God, I could do this forever. Or you'll know by what other people tell you, yeah. you know, I mean, you, you shouldn't always listen to other people, but sometimes certain people are there to tell you certain things for you to listen to and take you to, you know? So you got to really be, it's about self-awareness. It really is. And you know, it's funny. It's a funny journey too. For as many poignant moments, for every time that you're crying and you're down or you're, you're standing up strong and you're ready to conquer the world, there are so many stumbles and falls that become the stuff that stories over mimosas and pedicures are made of. Mm -hmm. So are there any really funny things like when you just look back and you go, how did I even get out of that one? Girl, yes, I was sleeping in my car for 43 days. How the hell did I get? <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. There have been moments where I'm like, oh, my God, this is never going to end. I'm going to be in this forever. But then here comes the self-awareness. Here, here comes what you, the self-taught, like, healthy things. This is just a moment in time. This is not going to last forever pull it together i had to tell myself that the other day like literally like less than a week ago this is a moment in time shannon you know that these things don't last forever would you knock it off be mad right now mm -hmm. but guess what it's it, this it's just a moment you'll be fine like i have to tell myself that because really it is you know i saw something on instagram that said uh a meme that said if it if it if you were to die tomorrow would it whatever it is that you're mad at today, would it like matter? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, so you got to right. really like think about what does this, should I be mad at this or should I, you know what I'm saying? So it's just a, should I be mad at this? You have long to think time? of it. Yeah. Big right. Big yeah. Big big like, big let big yourself shit. be mad in the moment. <laughs> right. Right. You know, and, 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 and if you're and that's a fiery okay person, too. which clearly you probably aren't, you're super, <laughs> but, you know, it can be a, <laughs> a tough thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly, for sure. That's something you learn, you learn to rein in. But I think yeah. a lot of people get scared to change gears later in life, too. Mm -hmm. And they think, okay, if I started off in this one career or in this one relationship, or even with this one view of who they are personality wise, it seems so hard once you get past your early 20s, your 30s at all, you know, to change gears. Mm -hmm. What are some ways that you were able, and again, you were kind of on this, like a trajectory of entertainment and hosting. So you had this core, but you mm -hmm. didn't stay in the same version of the career. Right, right, What's your right. advice for someone on how to navigate going out on their own? And you know, you, you did it with a hundred bucks in your pocket. Not, yeah. every, not every business can be launched that way, right. but what's the bare minimum in terms of mentality to go get it? So th th what you just said, like, <laughs> go get it. <laughs> you just, right? That, you, that drive. I always tell people that 
you have to make a decision and not one of those decisions, not a wishy-washy decision. It has to be an, a decision where like, no matter what, no matter what, you know, like this is my child. You have to mm-hmm. think of your business or whatever it is that you want to get, get into as if it were your child. Would you give up on your child at two years old? Oh, forget it. This parenting thing is too hard. I'm done. Like, would you give up on your kid? Not never. You would never. never give up on your child. So you have to treat your business and what it is that you do like it's your baby. And nothing less than that. You have to 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 nurture it. You gotta feed it. You gotta take care of it every day so that it can grow up to be, you know, a flourishing, you know, well rounded, you know, what you know, you apply it. Yeah. To yeah, parenting. I'm exactly. not a parent yet, but I can, this is, this is what I see when I think of like being a parent. Like yeah. it's about my child. Like my mom made it about me, you know? So right, that's how, right. that is how I treat my business. Like whenever I'm into anything that I, if I'm thinking about getting into something or if I'm thinking about doing something, I always say to myself, am I willing to say it's this and you guys might think I'm dramatic when I say this, but it's the truth. But it's this or death. Like, mm-hmm. like I take it that seriously. Like, it is this. No, I get it. I'm laughing because I don't say it's this or death. But what I say, I always say, okay, if you were to die tomorrow, did you spend today in a way that, that you would regret? And I try to keep it small with just the day because you can't look at the week, the month, the years, whatever. But, you know, literally, if you got taken out right now, were you treating people the right way? Were you doing the things that made you happy? And yeah, sure, we we all have bills to pay. We've got the mortgage. We've got chores. We've got responsibilities. So not every minute of the day are you going to be enjoying it, you know? Right, right. But the overarching feeling, did you did you experience what you wanted to that day? So I go right there too. So I'm glad I, I, there's somebody else out there who uses death no, as their, exactly. uh, <laughs> their motivation. That, yeah, it, to me, it, it's yeah. that serious. Not dramatic you know? at all. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm serious. Like, I, I just really, I have to be that extreme because if I'm not then I'm not one of those girls that like ride the middle and I'm, I'm just super like, it's very black and white for me. So I, and that may be a good or bad thing, you know, depending on how you perceive it, but I'm like, I'm, I'm going in. And if I, if, if, if I'm not balls to the wall, (laughs) if I'm not like for real, then I'm not going to do it, you know? So everything that I do, it may not come out perfect. It may not, but I just, I just got to go for the goal. Yeah. I think, I, I think you have to do that. You have to just run, run, run because otherwise it can get lost in right. the, the minutia. Right. And then you start second guessing. That's where the second guessing comes in. And that's where the worrying and all that stuff, because you didn't make a, 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 a firm decision. You make the firm decision and guess what? You made a promise to yourself that no matter what happens, I'm going to press forward. No matter what obstacles present themselves, I am going to press forward on this dream. I will figure it out. Like when I lose team members now, like I look at it as a great thing because I always say, God, you've got something amazing, way more amazing coming, way more amazing in the, you know, chilling in the background, like. I don't get mad at that stuff anymore, you know, because I, I made a decision that I was going to be serious about this dream and I, I'm doing my part. God is going to do his and, and that's pretty much it. So that I've, I've just convinced myself that and, and everything that's, that's happening is working yeah. together for my the betterment of me. It's working. It's all working together for me. There's a reason why, you know, manifesting positive thought. Uh, books like The Secret and even prayer work for people, you know, Mm -hmm. for anyone who who would argue that you can't think your way into the life that you love. There is too much collective thought for us as as a human race that would argue otherwise, don't you think? Absolutely. Absolutely. To me, Mm -hmm. for, for me, it's the meditation and the prayer. I haven't meditated in a little bit because... I've I've been on my own like personal stuff right now, but I need to get back to it because to me, prayer is when you receive and meditation is you putting out 
or the other way around. Sorry. Prayer is you putting out and meditation is you receiving. Yeah. And you need, right. And you need to create that balance in order for things to happen. Meditating so. is not something that I have tried yet. A lot of people have told me that I should, mm -hmm. but I think I am scared to sit that still. It would take a lot of work to calm my mind. I would be sitting there going, okay, um, maybe I could meditate while I was doing the laundry. So I could just <laughs> like, does that count? Like, I'll just start like counting the, the socks or full. If it's meditative, I'm folding, it's repetition. Come on, does that count? <laughs> No. You know what it is? You might benefit from guided meditation because I'm the same way. I can't sit in silence. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to do it myself. Yeah, yeah no, I, I can't. Yeah, so I always <laughs> do med guided meditation and it's great. They tell me, so they control the direction in which my thoughts go, you know? So you probably would benefit from that. Like I can't do, I can't do that either. Can't just sit there. Mm -mm. I like that. No, the only, the closest I can get is when I go running in the Florida heat because I'm just trying to stay alive. And <laughs> I just zone out and I start thinking about, you know, what book I'm writing or, you know, I listen yeah. to a song and I go off and I daydream. But I think that's just because I'm like one foot in front of the other. <laughs> this is how it all ends. No one's ever gonna see me again. <laughs> Under this palm tree, this is where it ends. <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> oh, it's, gotten, it's gotten a little bit, a little bit cooler here. So good, it's good. nothing like California weather, but it has been crazy out, out you know, on the whole West Coast with the fires. It's been nuts, so. Yeah, I'm not over there right now, yeah. so thankfully. I'm, in, I'm on the East Coast. Nice, okay, yeah. so you're, you're back on this side of the world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the weather's getting cooler. It's about 60s mm -hmm. now, so fall is peeking its head in. It's great, I don't have any it's complaints so with that. It's so weird, I look back home, I grew up in Rhode Island and I see all my high school friends and my family and they're in scarfs and I'm like, what? Oh, I forget, wow. there is no passage of time in Florida. I forget, like, yeah. is it April? Or is it, you know, <laughs> there is a cold, cold, a cool little sliver yeah. in the middle where I'm like, okay, that was winter, yeah. I think. Yeah. But yeah. the rest of it all bleeds in. But I was freezing in Boston. I, this was the best move. This was the best move I ever nice. made. That was one of those things where you just know. You're like, yeah. I, need to, I need my sunshine. I need to I go somewhere you. where Congratulations. I, can, I can spend my weekends on the beach and out in the sun. What's nice. next for you? I mean, you said that this is the show that you want to launch. So tangibly, what are some of the steps and like things that you're thinking? What is that? What are you manifesting for yourself? So I am manifesting some of the great uh, guests that I've had on Quarantini and Mimosas to be on Petty's yeah. Mimosas season three. Nice. So again, like this period may seem like a, a, a period of a, I guess, if things are slowing down or whatever, mm -hmm. but I, I just feel like God is preparing, preparing me for an amazing season three for next year, you know? So it's keeping quarantine and mimosas is keeping the brand alive and yeah. keeping, keeping me sharp with my interview skills, you know? So, um, so I am manifesting bigger, you know, more amazing talent for, like I said, season three. And also I'm dropping my lip line pretty smack. Yeah. Yes, I, I love that. I love that. For anybody who's just joining us now, I, the, the whole idea is that, you know, there's nothing, I, I don't think there's a better spot to remind people to sort of be bold or be yeah. beautiful. So all of the, the lip lines, they're going to be named something that is yes. a positive affirmation, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I cannot wait. Like, this is going to be like, I've done some pretty cool things, but mm -hmm. this, this to me is going to be, is going to take the cake. Like, it really is. I love I've already been getting... I had the thought once, I was like, when, at, so at what age do I have to stop wearing gloss? Like, is it like a... Never! No, I was like, do I ever have to go matte lipstick? And I was like, first of all, it feels like I'm a dried out, just like prune when I wear just plain That's the lipstick. Thing I my... hate that feeling. My matte, it does not dry your lips out. So I'm dropping seven colors. Ooh, and that is one of the, like, the benefits. Yeah. And so choosing my line is that it will not dry your lips out. And it doesn't come off on anything either. Hmm. That's mm -hmm. nice. Because I think mm -hmm. I, I put most of my lip gloss on the back of most of my masks. Oh, really? You don't need, you don't need to put on a base. You don't need to do any of that. <laughs> I, I will say... You know, I'll do something on TV and then I'm like, oh, I got to run in an errand and I put it on and then I'm like, my whole face is on the back of the mask. <laughs> yeah. I could flip it, it around not. the other way and it would look like I had my mouth out. Mm -hmm, That's how mm -hmm, bad it is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm I hear excited. You. I'm excited I am to, look, too. Thank you. To, to see what's going to happen. And I think that, 
just the idea to, to tune out the noise and to say that it's okay to believe in the big, bold dream is yes. probably one of the most important and empowering things somebody can do. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Hey, 2020 yes. is not that bad. Goodbye to your 2017. No mm -hmm. 2017 in your life. A mm -hmm. lot of people want to say goodbye to 2020, but like you said, it all will pass. It mm -hmm. is a moment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, keep the eye on the, on the big picture, right? Yes. Keep your eye on the prize and press through no matter what. Better yet, make the decision that you're going to press through no matter what. Because it's one thing to say, but have you really made the decision to press through? That's completely different, you know? What does, what does the decision feel like versus the initial idea? Like, okay, I want to publish that book. I want to launch that show versus I have decided I will launch this show. It's this feeling that you, again, feeling. It's, mm -hmm. it's this thing that's going to happen on the inside, like in your gut area, and you're going to feel it. You're going to know. You're yeah. going to know. Almost like when they tell you, you know, when you met, I guess the man of your life or whatever, the woman of your life, you know, you know, like, you know, yeah, like, mm -hmm. I feel like it's that same thing. Like, you know, you have to become convic convicted in your spirit. I completely 100% agree. I couldn't, I, I couldn't even try to say that better. I won't. That's why I had you here. <laughs> that was the whole idea. So it has been such a pleasure talking to you. I Likewise. hope to stay in touch for a long time. Come back and hang out here anytime. Awesome. Uh, you want to update Thank us you. on what you're up to and tell people where they can find you. I'm right here on Instagram. I am Shannon Mack. I am on uh, YouTube, Shannon Mack TV. And I am on Facebook, Shannon Mack. Shannon Mack, it's easy as that. Mm -hmm. And the lipstick comes out when? Well, it was supposed to be around now, but Thank I'm a little bit of a perfectionist so mm -hmm. i'm not 100 percent happy with yeah. the uh the the tube design yet i'm only halfway there so we're still tweaking that and um so i'm shooting for early next year awesome awesome yeah. well i can't wait mm -hmm. i will see you early next year then maybe yay thank you so much <laughs> hang in there and i can't wait to see what you do next shannon mack thanks for being with us on find your fairy tale thank you for having me i appreciate you <laughs> good night everybody okay bye <laughs>